lot of people are in a spiritual warfare a lot of people are fighting certain things in fact a lot of people are being fought by certain things and they're not fighting back instead of they constantly fall back fall back into fear fall back into depression fall back into sin fall back into lust fall back into going back to the ex-boyfriend or fall back going back to drugs falling back into alcohol and i believe that god doesn't want you to fall back he wants you to fight back come on turn to your neighbor and say don't fall back fight back i want us to open the scripture in matthew chapter 12 and verse 43 it's a very famous verse and it's many times used specifically against people who get delivered as a sense of warning and today we're going to just look at this verse we're going to be praying during the message as well so we're going to work with the sermon Matthew 12 verse 43 when the unclean spirit goes out of a man he goes through dry places somebody say dry places seeking rest and finds none somebody say praise the Lord and he says I will return to my house from which I came and when he comes he finds it empty swept and put in order then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first so it shall be with every person who gets delivered is that what the bible says what does the bible say so it shall be with this person who got delivered no with this wicked generation amen i want you to highlight i want to highlight a few simple things one is the Bible says when an evil spirit now this is a parable but it has one interpretation and many applications Jesus is talking to religious leaders he is not talking to a person who just got delivered he is speaking to religious leaders who are questioning Jesus who are saying he has a demon because he casts out demons who are asking for more signs so they can believe in Jesus and Jesus is using this parable as an example of what's about to happen to them Jesus is not speaking to a person who got delivered to give them a warning that they will get more demons even though it is true he spoke to one man who was healed and he says make sure you don't do more sin otherwise worse can happen to you there is always a warning when a person remains empty instead of being filled after they are delivered but it's important not to take this verse out of context and produce unnecessary warning because our goal is not to produce warning today our goal is to produce strength today warning is always there but our goal is to equip and to empower let's break this verse down Jesus says this when an unclean spirit goes out of the man somebody say goes out it's not being cast out this is not speaking of deliverance because during deliverance and demon doesn't go out a demons gets expelled banished and cast out I live right now with my brother and my sister-in-law every single day I go out of their house but leaving their house and moving out are two different things you might say how is that possible for a demon to leave a person it is possible for a person to have a demon and experience relief somebody say relief a relief from a demon for a season for a moment the Bible says that King Saul had a tormenting spirit who would come and go demons look for a dwelling place but whatever they dwell they don't necessarily have to be 24 7 that's why a person who has a demon of anger will have a moments of anger and then the demon would leave when a demon leaves it doesn't mean that the demon is removed it just means the demon just left for a non-believer this simply is a moment of relief for us we have to understand we are not here to wait for a demon to leave deliverance is not us waiting for a demon to leave deliverance is us taking and telling the devil pack your bags and you're being evicted 
eviction is different if my brother today would tell me Vlad you are moving out of my house tomorrow morning I wouldn't be just leaving his house I will be moving out of his house so what is happening this weekend is not demon leaving you it is demon being removed out of you that means they are losing their dwelling place that means they are losing their mailing address that means they are losing their right to call you their house that is why the demon said my house because it was never removed it simply left deliverance is not when a demon leaves it's when a demon is forced out my friend I want to tell you something there's only one way to remove a demon it is forcibly to remove him no other prescription is given in the gospels or in the epistles of apostles with dealing with demons except through banishment eviction and forceful removal demons do not know no they don't take no for an answer they don't agree they don't cannot they cannot be bargained they cannot be negotiated with they cannot be asked politely they have to be forced out for those of you who are maybe like sometimes see why we pray aggressively why we commend aggressively because you must understand one thing about the nature of expelling demons they do not leave voluntarily they have to be forced out by a force that is greater than them and you must understand so number one if you are taking notes write this down is deliverance we drive demons out by deliverance demons will not leave voluntarily but but they don't move unless they are removed when an unclean spirit goes out I don't believe it's speaking about you and I because when an unclean spirit leaves my life he gets cast out he doesn't leave voluntarily if a demon voluntarily left your life he is coming back but when a demon is forced out he loses his residence he gets evicted and therefore your goal is not to wait for COVID to end so you lose your fear your goal is to force your fear out your goal is not to find a new boyfriend so that rejection will leave your goal is to force rejection out your goal is not to find a new job so that the curse of poverty leaves your goal is to force the curse of poverty out because we evict demons we don't wait for them to leave but I want you to see the second thing is the demon says I will return to my house somebody say my house number two if you're taking notes I want you to write this down is that remove demons by repentance remove demons by repentance we drive them out by deliverance and we have to remove them also by repentance a demon cannot say my house concerning you if you repented repentance changes ownership repentance replaces bosses in your life when you only experience deliverance but you did not experience repentance you will experience relief from demons but not rest from demons because what relief does is this is that you temporarily feeling good but if there is no repentance done in your life demons claim ownership to your soul to your mind and to your life a lot of people what they do without repentance is they settle for relief instead of deliverance they settle for a relief they use Advil of church attendance and they feel better in God's presence they take the Tylenol of worship music in their car and it gives them it numbs the pain but it does not remove the cause my friend there is only one way to pull the root out it is through the shovel of repentance and that's why it's easy to come here and say I want to manifest to be delivered and that is awesome but you must understand for a demon to lose its hold over your life you don't need to manifest only you need to repent 
that means you need to repent you need to turn around and give your life entirely to Jesus Christ you gotta change your mind about immorality you gotta change your mind about media you gotta change your mind about what you're drinking and what you're watching and what you're listening to repent is to change your mind and turn around and give your life entirely to God somebody give God some praise right now number three revoke demons access by Jesus's authority I will return to my house how does the demon have the audacity to call a person my house well he has the right to call somebody their house if they have not been evicted yet if the demon has not been removed yet and if somebody did not revoke their key their access key their contract or their agreement me and my wife have had people that lived with us for a very long time and, and there was a time where we had to remove somebody from our house we had to ask them to leave our house it was very a firm conversation this wasn't like do you want to go this was more of like hey this is not working out and uh, you, you have to move out by this particular time and when we would tell the person and sometimes it was a nice person and there were times where it was it was a difficult person to deal with we had to ask them to uh, to leave the next thing that would happen is this is the keys in the house would change why because those people typically not only have a key to our house their cousin has a key to our house Come on, some, uh, all of us know we, we, we make the copies of the keys and we just kind of hand them out to our family that's why when you repent you not only should repent you should revoke the access that demon and their groupings have because the devil is a clever devil the spirit of jealousy always gives an extra key to the spirit of envy the envy always shares secrets with the spirit of bitterness and the spirit of bitterness when they get together for coffee he gives it a key to a spirit of offense and next thing you know initially you only invited envy how come is offense has access to my key to my house how come bitterness and unforgiveness how come now sleeplessness and insomnia intrusive thoughts suicidal tendency why because devil makes copies of the keys but today has come a time where we must revoke the access change the code change the password and tell devil I ripped the contract with you I know when I was in sin I know when I was weak I made some deals with unforgiveness I made some deals with fear I made some deals when not nightmares I even maybe went to some things like witchcraft and the cold maybe my mom or my grandma took me to some kind of a doctor who made me drink something that an evil spirit entered my life maybe in my college years I made something that I regret like I committed abortion or something and the devil has a contract when you repent you replace the Lord in your life but then you have to rise up and tell that devil I am changing the keys I am revoking the access I'm revoking every access that you have had to my life you have to do it verbally you have to do it intentionally and you have to do it powerfully can somebody say amen, amen. I believe God wants to revoke today and the access that that the enemy has had over our life the access of soul ties the access of vows that we've made I will never I will always the access of covenants I remember praying right there in the back of a young man who though being a Christian made a deal with the devil that if he will give him a lot of sex and money that he will serve the devil this guy was a Christian in Tri-Cities a young man I was 17 years of age and when he got saved on our Thursday night youth service we started to pray for him and next thing that happens we had to tear the access away and when he started to confess I revoke that access demons started to manifest you have to revoke the curses spoken over your life by somebody in your past you have to revoke that you have to simply tell the enemy I am not letting that rule my life I revoke that in Jesus mighty name in fact I want you to rise to your feet right now let's just take a little break during the message and put this into practice every access of the enemy has to be revoked right now every spell 
must be revoked right now. Say, as a child of God, I belong to Jesus. I revoke every spell over my life in Jesus' name. Say, I revoke every witchcraft over my life in Jesus' name. Say, I revoke every curse over my life in Jesus' name. I revoke every sorcery over my life in Jesus' name. I revoke every divination over my life in Jesus' name. Listen to me, Satan. I revoke every oath in my life in Jesus' name. Every demonic covenant be revoked right now in Jesus' name. Every covenant with spirit of fear be revoked in Jesus name every covenant every covenant with spirit of immorality be revoked in Jesus name come on right now open up your lips begin to revoke every covenant that you have had begin to right now revoke every contract you have had in Jesus mighty name in Jesus' mighty name, we break every single legal right of the enemy right now. In Jesus' name, we come against every principality and power of darkness. We come against all witches and all warlocks. We break your grip right now. In Jesus' mighty name, we come against every spirit of witchcraft. We come against every blood covenant, every generational curse. In Jesus' name, we command you to be broken. In Jesus' mighty name, we break you, spirit of divination right now. We break your power every chain of the enemy every stronghold be broken in Jesus mighty name we tear down every single wall of the enemy right now in Jesus name you generational curse you cast curse I command you you are illegal in my life I revoke you in Jesus mighty name we pray come on begin to break right now every covenant Put your hand out like this right now. Begin to break every covenant, every contract, every rental agreement that you have had with the devil, every agreement that you have had with the Satan, with the spirit of jealousy, with the spirit of offense, with the spirit of fear, with the spirit of insecurity, with that sickness, with whatever maybe your family has made agreements with the demon right now. I want you to move your hand right now like a sword of the spirit and begin to say, devil, I break that covenant right now. I break your work right now in my life. I uproot that contract right now in the name of Jesus Christ. You will not have a claim to my life in Jesus mighty name. In the name of Jesus, I break every covenant that I've made with the devil. Every deal, every agreement. I break your power, Satan. I break your grip, Satan, over my life, over my finances, over my family, over my health, over my mental stability. In the name of Jesus, every spirit of offense, every spirit of witchcraft, every spirit of false religion every spirit of addiction every spirit of drugs and alcohol every spirit that is hindering me that is making me hesitate in the name of Jesus Christ I break you down I expose you and I expel you in the name of Jesus Christ every witchcraft every deal every curse upon my life I break it in Jesus name for those of you who are addicted to pornography or you are addicted to drugs or you are addicted to nicotine the first time that you took of that you made a deal with the devil you were just taking it as a nicotine you were just taking that but the devil saw that as a contract and ever since then he has claimed an access to your life and right now what we need to do is we need to break every claim spirit of addiction has over your life every claim that the spirit of bondage has over your life every claim that that spirit has there are people in this room you are here for that reason so that the addiction is broken that drug that marijuana that smoking addiction that drinking addiction that gambling addiction it has to be broken right now i want you to agree with me right now in jesus mighty name i want you to say this out loud say i am a child of god i have authority in jesus name and right now in the spiritual world I take my authority. I take my authority. I break every claim. I break every claim. The demon of addiction. The demon of addiction. 
demon of alcohol demon of alcohol the demon of pornography the demon of pornography that demon of smoking the demon of smoking that demon of masturbation the demon of masturbation that demon of gambling the demon of gambling that demon has over my life that demon that has over my life i break that i break that i break that covenant i break that covenant i tear that agreement i tear that agreement in the mighty name of jesus in the mighty name of jesus you spirit of addiction you spirit of addiction i command you i command you Your grip. Loose your grip and come out. And get out. And come out. And come out. 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 Right now. Right now. Come out. Come out. I am tired of you. I am tired of you. I am sick of you. I am sick of you. And I command you. And I command you. Get out. Open up your mouth and begin to command it out. Begin to command every spirit of addiction out. Begin to command every spirit of addiction out. You deserve, you were called to live in freedom. Bondage is not your portion. Drugs is not your portion. Alcohol is not your portion. Begin to command it out. Jesus, my dear, begin to get angry right now. Begin to open up your lips. Begin to fight against the guy that was stealing, against the demons that have been tormenting your life. Say, you addiction. Say, you torment. Come out. Out of my life. Come out. Out of my marriage. Come out. Out of my health. Come out. Out of my finances. Come out. Out of my children. Come out. Out of my business. Come out. Out of my studies. Out. 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 In Jesus' name, open up your lips. Begin to break that addiction. Begin to break that addiction to gambling. Begin to break that addiction to smoking. Smoking weed. Smoking cigarettes. Addiction to drinking. Addiction to gambling. Addiction to pornography. Addiction to masturbation. Open up your lips. Begin to fight right now. Begin to tear that agreement. Begin to tear that covenant. In Jesus' mighty name. Come out. Come out. Out. In Jesus' mighty name. One of the things that many people have, especially in this culture, is a spirit of fear and a spirit of offense. That if they get offended faster than you can catch a COVID. It's unbelievable. Every single smallest little thing and they're offended. Gossip, offense, bitterness, and they're constantly, and right now, I really believe it's a spiritual problem as well. And so right now, I want you to right now begin to break that covenant with offense. You're not going to be an offended person. You are going to be a powerful person. You're not going to be a pitiful person. You're going to be a powerful person. Can somebody say amen? Say every spirit of offense, every spirit of fear, you have no place in my soul. And right now, I evict you in the mighty name of Jesus. I break up with you. In the name of Jesus, spirit of fear, depression, anxiety, intrusive thoughts, suicidal tendencies, nightmares. I divorce you. I break your grip right now. I break your grip right now. Come on, take next 30 seconds right now. Begin to break the grip of offense. Begin to break the grip of offense, fear and anxiety in the name of Jesus Christ. chain in the mighty name of Jesus. Begin to break that offense in Jesus mighty name. Begin to be break that better root in Jesus mighty name. Begin to break it in the mighty name of Jesus. Come on, use your spiritual authority. Begin to break it in Jesus name. Begin to break it in Jesus mighty name. Begin to break it in Jesus mighty name. And right now I want you to open up your lips and say, any chain Satan might have used to connect me to himself. Be broken, be broken, be broken, be 
broken. Be broken. Come on, open up your lips to any chain Satan might have used to connect me to himself. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Any covenant Satan might have used to connect me to himself. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Any abuse Satan might have used to connect me to himself. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Any witchcraft Satan might have used to connect me to himself. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Any agreement that Satan might have used to connect me to himself. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Open up your lips and break that agreement. Break that agreement in Jesus' mighty name. name. In Jesus' mighty name. In the name of Jesus. Say, I belong to Jesus. My body is his temple. My soul belongs to Jesus. In Jesus' name. I want you to take a, take a seat just for a moment. The Bible says that I will return to my house from which I came. See, when we revoke Satan's access by the authority of the name of Jesus, we no longer belong to the enemy. You no longer become the house of demons. You become the temple of the Holy Spirit. That's why I believe that this verse doesn't necessarily apply to you and I. Unless after we get freed, we don't get possessed. We have to become possessed after we become freed. Why? Because perfection is not what protects us from demons. Possession does. Have you noticed that the person was clean, swept and put in order? It's what every person wants to have in their life. To live a clean life, to be swept and to put their life in order. I'm going to tell you one thing. That is what makes you the most vulnerable. Your greatest protection against demonic attack is not clean, swept and put in order. It's possessed. It's to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. It's to be owned by the Holy Spirit. It's to be filled with the Holy Spirit. That is the greatest protection. Not clean because we all fall short of the glory of God. We all make mistakes. We all trip and fall, slip. But when we are possessed, I'm not just talking about that I have a little Jesus living somewhere buried in the basement closet on my soul. I am talking about being possessed. See, the many of us, the devil comes to our house and he sees the lights on. And we're fooling the devil thinking that because the lights are on but nobody's home. Nobody's home. Why? Because we're still available. God doesn't want you to be available. God wants you to be out of stock. Sold out. When I was a single man and a girl would flirt with me, I say, you know what, I, I don't like you. When I am a married man and somebody flirts with me, I say, uh, I'm, I'm not even in the market. <laughs> See, you have to understand, is when you become free and you still become available, you can no longer be available to nobody and you have to be sold out to Jesus Christ. The same way you serve the devil, you have to serve Jesus the same way. If you partied in the evenings, you can't make up excuses why can't you pray in the evenings. If you wasted your money on drugs and now you're debating whether you should tithe, you're still available. God wants you to be possessed, burn, burning out for the Lord, consumed by Jesus Christ. Many Christians when they get delivered they seek this thing thinking this is what's going to protect me from the devil. Clean, swept and put in order. My marriage is in order, my finances is in order, my credit card is in order, my credit score is in order, my schooling is in order and I want to tell you one thing that's what makes you most vulnerable. The greatest protection against demonic infiltration is not to be clean, swept and put in order, is to be filled is to be cleansed by the blood of Jesus, to have a new heart and to be possessed by the Holy Spirit. I understand. Come on. Many people would say things like, 
You know, a Christian cannot have a demon because the Holy Spirit possesses a Christian. Now, I have in my life seen few people possessed and you probably have as well. If somebody comes to you and says, I am possessed by the devil, but they don't exhibit evidence of that, would you believe them? If they live a normal life, everything is normal and they come and say, I, I am possessed. Do you have nightmares? No. Do you have intrusive thoughts? No. Do you have anything in your life that evidences that? No, but I believe that I'm possessed. You would say, well, the thing about it is that you're delusional. If a Christian comes to me and says, well, demon cannot live in me. Why? Because I'm possessed by the Holy Spirit and there is no evidence. No prayer life. No Bible reading. Nothing. How in the world can you say you're possessed by God if you live a normal life? How can someone say they are possessed by demons if they are normal? Because one thing demons do, when they possess you, you can no longer be normal. You speak gibberish, you curse, you cuss, you have violence, you have things that are not natural and things that are not normal. And that is the evidence you are possessed by a demon. My friend, stop hiding behind this notion. God it lives in me and I cannot have demons. Question is God doesn't come like a church mice that hides and just shows up when it's cold outside. God comes in to possess, to own. He comes in to live through you, to manifest through your hands, through your eyes, through your mouth, through your finances. And so my friend, the greatest protection against demonic infiltration is not a clean life. It is possessed life. Don't hide behind, oh I broke every chain. Oh I broke that stronghold. My friend, you are not protected when you broke it. You are protected when you're burning. You are protected when you are consumed by God. Somebody give God some praise. Amen. And the Bible says this is that I will return to, verse 43 and I just want to just take a moment and speak to those people who will go back home after they got delivered or who are watching us on zoom right now. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man he goes through dry places. Usually after deliverance a person who got delivered experiences dry place. Israel came out of Egypt. What is the first thing they entered? Wilderness. A demon goes out of a man, goes through dry places. Wilderness scares newly delivered people. Because in wilderness you begin to doubt your deliverance. In wilderness you begin to feel a little bit weird. Sometimes if deliverance was powerful you were so fatigued that for next few days you're physically tired. You're physically exhausted. But I want to encourage you with one thing. Demons did not dwell in dry places. They went through dry places. Demons don't dwell in dry places. They dwell in dead places. If you are dry, remember you're not dead. If you're in the wilderness, remember you're not in the wickedness. Demons live in wicked places, not in the wilderness. So when you are delivered, this is what typically will happen. The demon that you had live on the inside of you, a lot of times will come and attack you on the outside. And it will feel like, man, but I'm still being attacked. But you have to understand that demon no longer lives in your basement. Now he's on the outside knocking and you're experiencing spiritual wilderness. You may not feel the presence of God for a moment. You might feel like even God abandoned you for a moment and I give you a simple secret that worked in my life and I've seen it work in people who move from deliverance to dominion. When you are dry, stay hydrated. In your wilderness you will find water in two places. The Word and worship. The Bible says, and this demon could not find rest. Somebody say, no rest. no rest. Why was there no rest? There's only one secret. When you hit a dry spell, run to water. When Israel came out of Egypt, what is the first thing God drove them to? To water. Why? Because demons can swim. When you run, you're dry. Maybe you feel empty. You feel a little bit confused. 
two things you gotta do in your wilderness maybe you come home and it feels like even hell is breaking loose you entered your wilderness it does not mean you're in a warfare it just simply means the demons now are looking and in the dry places for a place to rest give them no rest give them resistance by staying hydrated with the word of God run to God's word run to worship when you don't feel God's presence feed yourself with God's word when you don't feel God's presence run to church when the doors of the church are open you gotta be there why because when you run to water you will shed demons that Pharaoh will die in the Red Sea but you will be cleansed by the Red Sea when you go to the water God is gonna drown the enemy God is gonna drown the enemy Your your wilderness will not last in Jesus mighty name your dry season will not last in Jesus name you will last you will overcome you will overcome that season and you will come on the other side in dominion in the promised land and in God's breakthrough somebody give God some praise right now hallelujah and the last thing that I want you to see is the Bible says that evil spirit says I will come and the house is swept clean put in order he goes back and says I will take seven more demons and come back and live and dwell there I find it interesting the person never resisted the demon never created a war against the demon that's why I don't believe this applies to you and I because if the devil you got delivered from comes back knocking there will be a position there will be a struggle there will be a no there will be a excuse me wrong address talk to my hand I have no idea who you're talking to the the spirit of lesbianism uh that may be the old resident who lived here but it's a wrong address you're barking at the wrong tree that spirit of pornography that will come in and say you know what no I made a covenant with my eyes that I will not behold any wicked thing I don't know that that, will, that's, that is a wrong address return to the sender why because there will be resistance this person had no resistance and this is why because the person is referring here is referring to a wicked generation you're not wicked generation because Bible says you are chosen generation you're not wicked generation you are somebody say chosen the Bible says you are royal priesthood you are not religious passive person the scripture says you are a holy nation no 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 not clean nation see clean is wiped clean a uh, holy is separated unto God holy is dedicated is consecrated and God is saying you are not just swept in order but you are consecrated you are sold out to Jesus Christ you are chosen generation royal priesthood a holy nation and then it says this his own special people God owns me he owns every fiber of my being he owns my body he owns my body members God owns me therefore when the devil comes back and he will he's gonna meet a totally different person and that is why he is not gonna come back to you with seven more demons even if you fall seven times you will get up why because you're no longer wicked you're righteous you're no longer wicked you're chosen you're no longer a religious you are a priest now you are no longer empty and clean you are owned by God you are different and so you should not fear seven more demons devil should fear that even if he gets you seven times you're gonna be right back up right back up why because a righteous man falls seven times and gets right back up but the wicked person gets knocked down first time and seven demons come to them no 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 no, my friend I'm not afraid of seven demons because the devil is afraid of hitting me seven times I'm gonna be right back up 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 somebody give God some praise hallelujah I want to encourage somebody here when I was delivered from the I really believe it was a spirit of pornography I wish I would say I never fell again I fell never mentioned this publicly this is my first time I'm mentioning that is that right after that maybe a year or so I fell back into the same sin and there was a battle part of me this verse came to my mind 
oh my goodness you need deliverance again oh my goodness you're gonna have seven times more of demons and at the young age people taught me well that not only I was delivered but my mind has to be renewed that the person that now fell into the same sin is different than the person who was delivered from that sin let me say that again the person who fell back into that sin is the different person than the person who got delivered from that sin and so when I rose up this is what happened instead of fearing the demons are gonna return to me I quickly returned to Jesus because Jesus told Peter he says Simon 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 asked Satan asked to sift you and he says you I pray that your faith will not fail and he says when you fail return to me and then you strengthen your brethren he did not say demons will return to you he says you're a different man now and when you fail you run to Jesus No, 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 no. I'm not going to walk to Jesus. I'm going to run. I'm going to run. I'm going to run. The Bible says, the demon says, they'll return to that man. They'll return. But Jesus says to Peter, when you fail, Peter, you will return to me. And that's what happened to me. I had a choice. Wait for demons to return to me or to realize Jesus is waiting for me to return to him. Now wait for three days. Now wait. How many more demons are going to come? But right there, get up and say, Jesus, I don't know what happened. I don't know how I tripped up. But Jesus, I'm not the same guy who needed deliverance before. Jesus, I'm not the gay person. I'm not the lesbian person. I'm not the addicted person. I run. I run. And when the devil sees you grabbing the feet of Jesus, there's nothing he can do. When the spirit of lesbianism sees you grabbing Jesus, that spirit's gonna run. When the spirit of pornography sees you grabbing Jesus, that spirit has to run. I wanna challenge you. When you fall back, to fight back. If you go back home and that nightmare comes back, fight back. When you go back home and depression seems to be but I was free for three days. If what happened? Fight back. Don't let the devil lie to you and say that now, listen, nothing changed. My friend, do not let the enemy come back seven times more without no resistance and without withstanding it. Be the person who doesn't have seven more demons, but be the person who can get up seven more times and still remain righteous still remain faithful still remain committed still remain glory to God somebody give God some praise right now somebody give God some praise right now come on give God a shout like you mean it you are a righteous person you are a chosen person you will get up I want you to stand on your feet in Exodus 14 13 and Moses said to people they get out of Egypt with joy and excitement oh how glorious it was they finally slept eight hours a night oh how glorious it was those thoughts of sin was no longer there oh how glorious it was the symptoms were gone I can finally breathe this was so beautiful I'm free I feel something left me this is awesome but three days later was that Pharaoh why is he why is why is he coming oh he's not coming to congratulate us because they're driving too fast Moses why is he I thought that God delivered and Pharaoh is gone why why, why is he there and when they got close I want you to notice what God said to the children of Israel do not be afraid stand still and you will see 
watch this you will not see change after your deliverance until you don't fear that you will go back I will lose my healing do not fear going back have faith that you will go forward that healing that happened to your body if the symptoms begin to creep on in that lower back oh it, it just came back oh it must be came back no, no 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 do not claim it as your own do not fear it coming back stand still in who you are I'm a healthy person fighting sickness I'm a victorious person fighting sin stand still and God says this and then you will see the salvation of the Lord which he will accomplish for you today and this has been my promise and my anchor for the Egyptians you see today you will see again no more forever and guess what they did after that and the Bible says and they went to get some water and they went into the water because right after you stand still you have to go to the water immerse yourself in the Word of God and the devil will still try to follow you immerse yourself into worship and the devil will try to follow you but there will be a point where God will be one click and the water will fill you and the enemy can swim when the worship will fill you when the Word will become part of you and that enemy that was keeping up with you says up, 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 up. and you will just walk out out of your dry place out of your wilderness into your dominion into your victory into your breakthrough and there will be a new season in your life and the demons you battled with all your life will no longer be a part of your family tree and the sickness you battled with all your life will no longer be a part of your children's lives why because thus says the Lord the Egyptians you see today you shall see again no more and the Bible says but be still be still the reason why I'm sharing this word is because I know what happens here can make good videos on YouTube and leave an amazing impression that God is moving but I also know the battle real battle in here continues afterwards and people panic it's one of the reasons that this is not me promoting fight back book it's one of the reasons I wrote the fight back book it's because we all have dealt with it ourselves for those people in here who are walking today free of homosexuality or lesbianism walking free of pornography walking free from diseases or infirmities or generational curses of divorce they all had to apply this thing hit a dry season be confused sometimes even doubt but make a decision even if they fell into alcohol again one more time they're not justifying their sin but they rose back up and they ran to Jesus grabbed Jesus' feet and said Jesus I don't know what happened but it wasn't me please forgive me please wash me please redeem me do not wait for the devil to come back because Jesus is waiting for you to come back and if you tripped up don't wait for seven demons make the devil wait for you to get up seven times because you're not a wicked generation you're a chosen generation why because you're not religious you are a righteous person because you're God's own people can somebody say amen